Now I told myself I was not going to make any trash can jokes, but my nephew who has no idea what a Mac Pro is saw the box and asked me what it was. So I told him, it's a computer, what does it look like? And of course he said it looks like... A trash can. You're recording, aren't you? Yep, you are. <laughs> Today's video is made possible by Hulu Plus. For a free extended two-week trial, head over to huluplus.com slash TLD. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD. Hope you guys are doing well. I am back just in the nick of time before the new year with an unboxing of the just released and completely redesigned 2013 Mac Pro. Now I was able to get a hold of the higher end of the two baseline Mac Pro configurations. So this is loaded with a 3.5 gigahertz six core Intel Xeon CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, dual AMD Fire Pro D500s, and 256 gigs of PCIe base flash storage. This comes in priced at $39.99 US as opposed to the $29.99 model, which is gonna get you a quad core CPU, 12 gigs of RAM, dual AMD Fire Pro D300s, and the same 256 gigs of PCIe based flash storage. Now jumping into the unboxing, just to give you guys an idea of how small not only the Mac Pro is, but the packaging as well. I'm about 5'11", and you can see the box barely comes up to my knee, so you do not have to be Chuck Norris to one hand a Mac Pro box anymore. So on the front of the box, we have one strip that we gotta pull open that's gonna give us access to the inside of the box. Of course, everything is packaged nice and cleanly. On top, there is one piece of styrofoam protecting the Mac Pro, and I gotta say, the sound of styrofoam drives me crazy. If anyone else is like that, let me know with a comment down below. Now taking out the Mac Pro for the first time, aesthetically it's got a lot more gray than the pictures depict. It almost has kind of a glossy gunmetal look to it, and as far as the weight goes, from everything I've read, I thought it was going to be a lot heavier, so I was pleasantly surprised with how light it was to me. Aside from that, there's not much else. There's no keyboard, no mouse, we have some literature which comes with a quick start guide and matching black Apple stickers. By the way, if anybody wants these, I know they're kind of limited, just leave me a comment down below and I will randomly pick someone and mail these off to you. Aside from that, last up, we have the power cable. And I'm actually curious what you guys think. Why did Apple not include a keyboard or a mouse with the Mac Pro? Was it to cut down cost, to cut down packaging, or did they assume that people who are buying a Mac Pro are gonna use something different? Now, I will admit I do not use Apple mice or keyboard on the daily, but for that price, it would have been nice to get something, you know, maybe like a limited edition black magic mouse just to have something to go along with the Mac Pro. Now, taking a closer look at the Mac Pro, you can see how small it looks on the desk next to a 27 inch iMac. On the back side, next to the Apple logo, there's a little lock. So if you slide it open, that'll actually give you access to pull the top of the Mac Pro off. And because of how it looks, you almost kind of expect it to sound like this when you take it off. It almost kind of reminds me of that scene from Jurassic Park. But in all seriousness, and whether you want to make trash can jokes or R2-D2 jokes, I think deep down, once you take a look inside, you got to admit, it is a beautiful piece of engineering. And contrary to initial reports, pretty much everything inside the Mac Pro is upgradable, especially the flash storage and the RAM. So we're looking at a total of four memory slots, two on each side across all Mac Pro models. This configuration comes loaded with four, 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 and four gig sticks, which makes 16. And you can't upgrade any of these Mac Pros to 64 gig. Now I actually did pick up some third party memory to upgrade the RAM on this Mac Pro So if anybody is interested in seeing a video on how to do that Let me know by hitting that like button now on the flip side of the Mac Pro taking a look at the ins and the outs We have a combined digital and audio outputs right next to the headphone jack below that is four USB 3.0 ports Six Thunderbolt 2 ports dual gig Ethernet ports HDMI and the power button now I got a question on Twitter asking how it is to access the back once the Mac Pro is sitting on your desk and it's actually pretty easy. The top kind of acts as a handle so you just spin it around, the back actually lights up and then you have access to all your ports. And just for kicks to give you guys one more example of how small the Mac Pro is, here is how it looks stacked up to the Galaxy Note 3. You can see the Note 3 is more than half the size of the Mac Pro. And for even more fun, it is shorter than that Walking Dead Season 2 limited edition Blu-ray that you guys have seen in some of my past videos. Now for my setup, in the time being, I don't have a dedicated monitor or a Thunderbolt display, so I'm using my iMac as a display for the Mac Pro, and I'm going to use that in the meantime while I benchmark the two against each other, and then decide which route I want to go, whether that's going for a Thunderbolt display or taking the plunge for a 4K monitor. So let me know what you guys think I should do with a comment down below. Initial impressions are it runs very, very, very quiet. I actually cannot hear it over my iMac, which is not loud to begin with. So because there are no moving parts inside the Mac Pro and the way it dissipates heat up through the top, once I combine this with a monitor, it's gonna be a near silent setup. Now I will be doing extensive testing and benchmarking comparing this not only against the iMac, but other Mac Pro models, but as far as initial results go, for Geekbench 64-bit, we're looking at a single core score of 3612 and a multi-core score of 20,710. 
Now, as far as the flash storage speeds go, those were insane. We're looking over 800 megabytes per second on the right side and over 900 megabytes per second on the read side of things. So we are near gigabyte per second transfer speeds on this Mac Pro. So if there is anything you guys want to see covered in the benchmarks, the testing, the comparisons, obviously the full review, let me know with a comment down below. And if you stumbled across this video for the first time, definitely subscribe so you do not miss out on any future Mac Pro coverage. Now, before I hop out here, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Hulu Plus for making this video possible. Now, I know most of you guys being on the interwebs know what Hulu is, but Hulu Plus ramps up the awesome and it's kind of like upgrading to an HD screen on your smartphone or tablet for the first time. With Hulu Plus, you can catch up on the entire season of currently airing shows. You can watch old favorites or even a movie. You can stream as many TV shows or movies as you want anytime, anywhere. So whether that's your PS4, your Xbox One, your Roku, or even one of these top five smartphones that we talked about. Hulu Plus has a huge selection of shows like Saturday Night Live, Jimmy Kimmel, and of course, Shock Tank. They also feature exclusive original content like Behind the Mask and The Wrong Man, and they were nice enough to reach out to me and offer those who watch TLD a free extended two-week trial by heading over to HuluPlus.com TLD. Now, a lot of you ask, how can you help support the channel? This is a super simple and easy way to do that. It allows us to put out the best possible content that we can and just score a killer deal at the same time. Make sure to use that link down below to let them know we sent you. So aside from that, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did and you are feeling like being awesome, make sure to hit that like button. It is much appreciated. And of course, in return, you get a virtual high five at your face. Now I actually used this Mac Pro to edit this entire video. And while I didn't get a chance to use any 4K footage, I used untranscoded, unoptimized AVCHD footage, which can get shaky at times. And the Mac Pro handled it like a champ. I know there's a lot of applications that aren't optimized to take advantage of the dual GPUs yet, but Final Cut Pro really uses them. And as you can see, I'm just throwing effect after effect after effect on here. And as you can see, I'm not getting any dropped frames. Now, if you guys have any questions on Mac Pro configurations or tech in general, hit me up with a comment down below. Or the actual best way to get a hold of me is on Twitter at TLD Today or Google Plus and Facebook, which are also linked down below, along with pricing on these Mac Pros and the gear that I use to make these videos. Again, this is Jonathan with TLD, and I will see you guys later.